Unit seven, day one notes, warm up. Number one says factor completely. First thought, is there a greatest common factor? Something I can divide each of these terms by. First term only has a one, so we can't divide a coefficient. And not all the terms have an x, so there's not a greatest common factor. Then I'm gonna count the terms. If I have three terms, I'm gonna look at the last term, negative 36, and find numbers that multiply together to give me negative 36. One and 36, two and 18, three and 12, four and eight, or four and nine, excuse me, six and six. Since they're going to add up to this negative five, then my higher number should be negative. I'll look at my options and see which ones add to a negative five. Four and negative nine add to negative five. Make my two factor parentheses, x plus four, x minus nine. Now, if this power was squared and this power was one, I would be finished. In this case, I have higher powers. I have to the fourth degree and to the second degree. Therefore, my two factors should be squared as well. x squared plus 4 and x squared minus 9. My instructions say to factor completely. So one of these, I might be able to factor further. It looks like I have a difference of squares. I can factor that one more time. cannot factor x squared plus 4, so I'll just rewrite that. x squared minus 9 becomes x squared minus 3, x squared plus 3. Number two, the same questions. Is there a greatest common factor, something I can divide both the terms by? No. And I count the terms. If there's only two terms, it's either a difference of squares, difference of two cubes, or sum of two cubes. This is a difference of two cubes, so I will use the formula. Identifying my a and my b, I use the square rooted version of my first and second term, uh, cube root version of my first and second term. So the cube root of 8 is 2, and the cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 125 is 5. And I just plug them into my formula, and I should be finished. 2x minus 5. A squared is a 2x squared, which would be 4x squared, plus AB, 5 times 2x is 10x, and then B squared, 5 squared is 25. I'm finished. Number three asked to solve by factoring, so we're going to factor it first. First question, is there a greatest common factor? Something I can divide each of the terms by. There is not a greatest common factor. And I count the terms. If there are four terms, the only method that we know is to factor by grouping. We're going to group the first two and the last two terms. If I'm subtracting between my first group and my second group, I'm going to make it adding and put the negative in front of the first term of the second group. Then I find the greatest common factor of both. My greatest common factor of the first group is x squared. The greatest common factor of the second group is negative 4. Whatever I factor out, I'm going to write in front. x cubed divided by x squared is x, minus 5x squared divided by x squared is just 5. Whatever I divide out, I put first, 
negative 4x divided by negative 4, so positive x, and positive 20 divided by negative 4 is a negative 5. Since my two groups are the same, that's my first factor. And whatever's left is my second factor. If I was only factoring, I would continue to factor, but it's asking us to solve, so I can just make each of these options equal to zero and find my solutions. So x minus five equals zero. We'll add five to both sides. My first solution is a positive 5. And then x squared minus 4 equals 0. We'll add 4 to both sides. And then to get rid of the square root, we're going to square root both sides. Square root of x squared is just x. When we square root both sides, we must include a plus or minus. We'll have a square root of 4 which we then can then simplify to square root of 4 is 2. So my second set of solutions is x equals plus or minus 2. Since my degree is 3, I should have three solutions. 1, 2, 3. Looks like I'm on the right track. For number 4, it says find the degree leading coefficient. Zero is with multiplicity and end behavior. Find the degree. I'm going to count the exponents of each of my factor. There is an assumed exponent of 1 in that middle parenthesis. So I have 4 plus 1 plus 3. My degree is 8. And it's asking for the leading coefficient. To find the leading coefficient, I'm going to first multiply by the negative that's in the front, then take the coefficient of my first group, which is 5, to the power of that group, so 5 to the fourth power. I'm going to multiply it by the coefficient of my second group, 1, to the power of that group, which is to the first power, multiplied by the coefficient of my last group, coefficient is 2 to the third power, make it to the third power. In your calculator, if you put negative 1 times 5 to the fourth times 1 to the first times 2 to the third, you should get a negative 5,000. Now we're going to find the zeros with the multiplicity. To make it nice and orderly, we'll make a table. The zeros of the first group, 5x minus 2, I'm going to write to the side. Okay. 5x minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 to both sides, 5x equals 2. And then divide both sides by 5, x equals 2 over 5. That's my first zero, 2 over 5. How many times did we multiply it? Well, we multiplied it four times, so my multiplicity is four. Find the zero of the second group. I'm going to take x plus three equals zero. Subtract three from both sides, x equals negative three. That's my second zero, negative three. How many times did it happen? My power is 1. We'll find our last 0. 2x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides. 2x equals negative 1. We'll divide both sides by 2. We'll get x equals negative 1 half. That is my last 0. And then how many times did it happen? It happened three times. <laughs> Sorry about that. I 
bar was covering up undo. I don't like those big fat ones. Let's get a nice thin line. Make my table a little bit nicer. I should have drew my table beforehand. 2 over 5 goes to 1, negative 3 goes to 1, and 1 half goes to 3. It's a little messy, but you can make yours look nicer. The last thing we need to do is find our end behavior. End behavior is as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches something. I'm going to look at my leading coefficient. If my leading coefficient is positive, this is going to go to positive infinity. If my leading coefficient is negative, it's going to go to negative infinity. For my second end behavior, as x approaches negative infinity, y is going to approach. I'm going to look at my degree. If my degree is even, it's going to go the same direction as my first end behavior. If my degree is odd, it's going to go in a different direction. Since my degree is even, and my first end behavior is going to negative infinity, my second end behavior is going to also go to negative infinity. Number five says graph on a calculator, then sketch using accurate points from the table. So we plug this into our calculator. We look at the table. We should get a point at negative 1, 9, 0, 1, 2, 9, and then 3 is going to be like negative 30 something, just way off. I'm just going to connect the dots. Number of turning points will be one less than the degree. Since I have a third power, I will have two turning points. So my power is three, my degree is three, the highest power. A third degree type is called a cubic. Looking at my graph, I have one real solution. Since my total number is three, I will have two imaginary. End behavior as x approaches positive infinity. Well, as my x goes up, my graph's going down. Therefore, as, as x approaches positive infinity, my y my y will approach negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, my y will approach positive infinity. As my x goes down, my graph is going up to positive infinity. All right, increasing intervals. I have an increasing interval from 0 right here to 2. 0 to 2. I have a decreasing interval from negative infinity until 2. And from 2 to negative infinity.